At the beginning of the 20th century, Canada was experiencing the effects of urbanization and immigration, including poverty, slums, and displaced people. The origins of social work really came out of uh, in, in, uh, industrialization in Canada. Uh, with industrialization came a lot of social dislocation. In, in Toronto, there were a couple of important women social science clubs that existed, I think 1911, 1912. The pressure for having a school of social work at the University of Toronto actually came from these women's organizations. So they went to the president of the University of Toronto and talked to him about this, and the president responded very favorably, saying, he could see that there was a need for it, but that there was no money for it. And Sarah Warren was one of these women, and she said, if I give money to pay for the director's salary, would that make a difference? And that made a, the difference. And so the Department of Social Sciences opened. The first School of Social Work in Canada was developed at the University of Toronto in 1914. And being the first School of Social Work in Canada was very influential in, in social work education and what got taught and how, we, how social workers are being trained. One important example of the faculty's impact took place shortly after the Great Depression. By 1933, 30% of Toronto's population was out of work. Professor Harry Cassidy, later head of the faculty, believed that provision of social programs by the government would help to remove inequalities in society. One of the things that uh, Professor Cassidy did was to speak to a meeting of the, uh, what was then the Conservative Party. And he said to them, look around you, look at the misery, look at the growing protest in the streets. What he was doing was trying to say to them, it's time for social reform now. His research on unemployment and relief, along with then faculty head Stuart Jaffray's work on social insurance and the cost of living report produced by alumni Bessie Tuzel, made a substantial contribution to the Marsh Report. Published in 1943, this report is widely regarded as the blueprint for establishing social programs in Canada. It had an enormous acclaim when it came out. It was reported on by all of the press across the country. And it suggested the promise of things to come. Today, all Canadians have access to programs such as health care, pensions, and unemployment insurance. Another example of the faculty's significant social impact took place after the Second World War. A lack of affordable housing had plagued Toronto for decades. The professors in our faculty at the time uh, decide that we need to teach housing and as part of social work. When Humphrey Carver was a professor here, he wrote a book called Houses for Canadians, 1948, published by the U University of Toronto Press. And that is the first ever scholarly book, book now, on housing in Canada. So our uh, faculty has had this long history of our professors and our deans being among the foremost of Canada's uh, housing experts. Albert Rose was very active in the housing movement, uh, housing advocate in the city of Toronto, and he and others helped bring about Regent Park. The push to achieve the first public housing project in Canada meant a very great deal to him. It was after the project was put in place that he did his primary research. He laid it all out in his iconic book on Regent Park. Tuzel and Cassidy and Rose and Carver, they all contributed in no small way to the developments which followed. Throughout its history, the faculty has been responsive to societal shifts, responding to the need for advanced graduate education. In the 60s, uh, and going into the, um, uh, into the 70s, the population in Toronto was really changing and that challenged the faculty and the curriculum. What's the uh, connection point between what we are teaching and the population groups. Professor Emeritus Dr. Donald Meek originated the work around anti-racism, multiculturalism and native issues. And certainly that work was important on many levels because it set those issues as a priority for our education and research. For years, well into the 80s, we had the only PhD program. Our students, when they graduated, primarily went into teaching positions in other colleges and universities across the country. Starting from the U of T, we have this spread out effect. So the ideas, the analytical frameworks that they came out with were influencing the education of social workers across Canada. 
In June 2007, U of T received the largest gift ever made to a faculty of social work in North America, $15 million from Lynn Factor and Sheldon Inwintosh. The faculty was renamed the Factor Inwintosh Faculty of Social Work in their honor. The gift from the Factor Inwintosh family has made an enormous, very positive difference to the faculty. What it allowed us to do was it provided five endowed chairs doing research in very critical areas. And importantly, it also allowed us 50 scholarships, and that's absolutely essential because it means that we can attract the best students and not have to worry about them not being able to afford it. The most significant accomplishments, I think, has been our focus on preparing the best graduates to practice in this diverse, changing context that we find ourselves in Toronto. Our students have this uh, very privileged opportunity to learn the state of the art in terms of cross-cultural social work, communicating and engaging with people from diverse backgrounds. Try to get across the idea, literally think globally, even if you're not going to practice in, in, in other countries, because other countries are here. Today the faculty is on a trajectory to continue its significant contributions into the next hundred years. Philanthropy has always played an important role in this faculty's work. It began a hundred years ago with Sarah Warren. It continued with Lynn Factor and Sheldon Imwatosh's transformative gift to the faculty. And it continues today with the University of Toronto's Boundless Campaign. We've been able to establish ourselves as one of the top schools of social work internationally and make a significant contribution to social work education and to the profession. There's always emerging social issues for us to respond to. I think that this school has demonstrated that it has the capacity and the interest and the energy to be shaping the future for that. In the hundred years of the faculty's existence, there have been huge sweeping changes in society. As we look to the future in the next hundred years, the faculty will continue to adapt to changes in society in innovative ways. We are very proud of our work with the community over the last hundred years, and we're very proud of our graduates who are working in the community all over the world. We're very excited about what the future holds for this faculty.